How do you remember the way to school every day? Why do your eyes blink without you even thinking about it? What is it that makes you feel happy, or sad, or even scared? Your brain is in charge of these things, and a lot more. In fact, your brain runs your body, and it controls just about everything you do, even when you're sleeping. And when it comes to learning, your brain is the most important part of your body because it is where all of your thinking and remembering and feeling takes place. Here are some things that we know about the brain. The average human brain weighs about three pounds and looks like a big gray wrinkly sponge. A dog's brain is 19 times smaller than a human adult brain, while an elephant's brain is four to five times bigger than ours. While you're awake, your brain generates up to 25 watts of power, enough to illuminate a light bulb. The biggest part of your brain is a cerebrum and it has two halves, one on either side of your head. Scientists know that the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. When you're thinking, you're using your cerebrum. You need it to solve maths problems, to speak, to draw pictures, to kick a football, to imagine things. Just about anything you do, in fact. Your memory lives in the cerebrum, both short-term memory, like what you ate for dinner last night, and long-term memory, how you felt on your first morning at school. The cerebrum also helps you to reason, like when you work out that you should do your homework now because there's a film you want to watch on TV later. So, the brain is boss, but it can't do it alone. It depends upon lots of microscopic cells called neurons, over 100 billion of them in fact, that let messages flow backwards and forwards between the brain and body. Each neuron has tiny branches that let it connect to other neurons. When you're learning things, electrical messages travel from one neuron to another, over and over. Eventually, the brain starts to create connections or pathways between the neurons, so things become easier and you can do them better and better. Think back to the first time you rode a bike. Your brain had to think about pedalling, staying balanced, steering with the handlebars, watching the road and braking, all at once. Hard work having to think about all these things at the same time. But eventually, as you got more practice, the neurons sent messages backwards and forwards until a pathway was created in your brain. Now you can ride your bike without thinking about it because the neurons have successfully created a bike riding pathway. Creating these neural pathways is how you learn and remember things. So, the more you use your brain to create these pathways, the more you will learn. Your brain is responsible for your feelings and emotions too. It's normal to feel all different kinds of emotions, happy, sad, worried or stressed. One of the things that we know for sure is that our emotions have a big impact on the way we learn. Feelings of stress or anxiety can make it very difficult for someone to learn. When you feel threatened or worried, your brain is programmed to trigger the release of chemicals such as adrenaline and cortisol into your body. These chemicals quickly alter the way you think, feel and behave, making it difficult to think clearly or take in new information. Scientists believe that we learn best when we are happy and relaxed. That is when our brain processes information most efficiently. There are other physical factors that can affect your brain's ability to concentrate and learn effectively. The brain requires water for creating neural pathways, so being dehydrated can mean that your thinking will be less effective. Not having enough water in your system can also lead to a rise in salt and increased blood pressure, which in turn can cause stress. The brain also needs the right balance of proteins, fats, vegetables, carbohydrates and sugars to work efficiently. So, maintaining a balanced and healthy diet is important for effective learning. If you have a diet that is too high in sugar and food additives, you will probably find it difficult to concentrate well, and it might even affect the way you behave. Other things can have an impact on your brain's ability to work efficiently. When you're tired or hungry, too hot or too cold, it's unlikely that you'll be able to concentrate effectively on learning. Sitting still for long periods of time can affect your ability to concentrate and study. It's good to take brain breaks where you do some physical movement or exercise. This will increase the oxygen in your bloodstream, which will help the neurons to fire.
Many people believe that a person's intelligence is fixed and it is not possible to become smarter. In fact, our brains are constantly changing and creating new neural pathways. This means that everyone is capable of learning and becoming more intelligent. There's lots you can do to make sure that your brain is healthy by creating the best conditions for learning. Firstly, the more you use your brain, the more efficient it will become. Challenge yourself in your learning, be ambitious, set targets for yourself and make sure that you have an imaginative and an inquiring mind. Use your brain by doing challenging activities such as puzzles, reading, playing music, drawing, playing computer games or anything else that gives your brain a workout. Make sure that you eat enough healthy foods that will give your brain the minerals it needs to function well. Drink plenty of water to make sure that you stay properly hydrated. Take regular exercise to increase the level of oxygen in your blood. Make sure that you get enough rest and sleep. Break your study sessions into chunks to aid concentration and take regular brain breaks to help maintain focus. Stimulate your brain in different ways. A combination of audio, visual and kinesthetic learning is often the best way to take in new information and learn new skills. Remember that your emotions play a big role in how well you learn. It's best to avoid studying or trying to learn new things when you're stressed or upset. Why not check out the other sections on memory and emotions?